to another video. Uh, well, we're gonna be stripping cotton again today. Uh, it's Monday, so it's the next, next week since the last time we harvested cotton. We already harvested quite a bit of our own cotton. I uh, didn't record any of it, but we did. Uh, that one day, the first day that we ended up harvesting cotton for ourselves, we started at 12 o'clock and we ended up quitting at 12 o'clock midnight and we ended up harvesting 240 acres and that was all in one day so it was a very productive day the next day we did just a little over 150 acres so then that we were pretty much caught up with what was already sprayed for that final kill shot after killing the cotton so now we're coming back here we should be able to harvest a few more fields uh, my cousin sprayed these fields last week Thursday, so they should be able to go today But we're gonna test them just to make sure and then we'll get after it and harvest some more cotton We're just now bringing this diesel tank to the cotton stripper. It still needs a little bit more fuel We'll fuel the one up the other one the second one is already filled up completely But we'll fill up the first one and we should get after it Yeah, I guess you know while I'm here filling it up with diesel might as well uh, start showing you guys how a cotton stripper works and uh, the difference between a cotton stripper and a cotton picker since there's there's quite a few differences so basically main part is the header uh, with a cotton picker I hope I hope a lot of you are a little bit familiar with a cotton picker but if you don't know it has a spindle and it just constantly turns and then picks just the cotton off the plant it doesn't take any of these burrs or anything this is what the cotton sits sits in. So the picker does not take any of these burrs, it just picks the cotton. The stripper has, if you look inside here, you got all these brushes here. It basically turns, or this one turns counterclockwise and this one turns clockwise. So it hits everything off the plant, including the burrs, anything that it can grab on, it hits off the plant, brings it to these augers, augers bring it up into the main auger that brings it to the middle which there's a fan behind there behind the tire there back here there's a nice big fan I guess it's very dirty you can't see it but there's a fan back there blows air blows air up and then it sucks the cotton from in from in the header blows it up into this burr extractor comes up the chute here falls down to the burr extractor and uh, actually, hold on, let me open up this lid real quick. All right, I opened up the lid. So basically, cotton falls down here, comes, it falls down, and then it hits these drums right here. And you got saws on here. They're extremely sharp and they can cut you. And they kind of beat up against here and it's spinning really fast. And then it knocks all the burrs off the cotton or as much as of what it can. And then there's a chute all around the bottom there. Can't see it because you know it's sitting on top of it. But that's where the burrs fall down. And then the cotton gets thrown to the back of here. And then the cotton will shoot up into this accumulator. And you can hold quite a bit of cotton in here until the baler here will start to bale it. And it works similar to just a regular hay baler, a round baler. So it just feeds it from underneath there has feeder rolls here if I come here to the back I'll actually show you inside the basket and then you'll be able to see let me just close this up real quick open this lid back here so it has these beater or meter rolls or beater rolls whatever you want to call them and then it feeds it down to that belt and then the belt brings it into the baler and then it makes you a nice fluffy round marshmallow. Let's just close this back up while we're at it. There you go. So yeah, that's basically how a cotton stripper works. Picker is the same concept except you have a different header and you don't have the burr extractor. It just goes from the header straight into the accumulator. The rest is the same. So not a very difficult concept. That's very, very, very simple. But yeah, that's a cotton stripper for you. Let's start her up and start stripping some cotton. Can I do this 
one-handed is a little bit difficult, but it works. Most likely we'll be able to go at least for four miles an hour, maybe five. It's kind of what we've been going everywhere. So works pretty good. There's still a few green leaves on there, but for the most part, uh, the other stripper, my cousin, he were here he checked up on and he said it looks good. But we'll see how long we'll be able to go. It was quite humid today morning, so there was a little bit of moisture on the cotton itself. But it looks like it's mainly dried up since then. It is it is 1230, so it's been a while since the morning. Just gonna do the end rows real quick here. We have 32 rows here on the outside of the field, and then the rest is all straight 180. But you know the moisture shows good. We're at 9.4%. It's gone up to about 11. So it's dry enough, that's for sure. I just don't know how much the header's gonna want to, or like the brushes. The brushes might wanna get completely full of the bark from the stems of the plants and from the leaves and everything. So not quite sure if it'll be too green on that part, but we're gonna make a couple rounds here, see what we think, see how good of a job it's doing. And then we'll see for the rest of the day if we need to just wait till tomorrow or if we'll continue for today. But if we start tomorrow, there's quite a few acres that we can start covering already. So it's gonna, we'll definitely have our work cut out for us for the rest of the year. Although, it, you know, it shouldn't take us a year. It better not take us a year, especially going five miles an hour. Yeah, this is not the best looking cotton, but you know, it's pretty decent for, for what kind of water we have here. The rain sure helped out a ton, that's for sure. If we didn't, if we didn't get the rain, it would not look like this, that's for sure. Well, I mean, of course, you, you got, a, got a bad spot, but you don't always have good spots across the field. Now that the end rows are done, this cotton is looking a little bit more decent, but still not the greatest cotton. We do have some some other acres where we have a lot more water, so we were, we were able to irrigate it a lot more. So there the cotton looks really good. Right here, it's kind of all just decent, but it is what it is. Can't complain with harvesting it now. So this shouldn't take too long. We only got about four fields. Oh, there's a road right there. So we got four fields all along the road right here. They're all, uh, all of them, yeah, all of them are half circles. So heaven is right here. There's CRP on that side. So these are only half circles. Each circle is only 40-ish acres. So they're, they're not very big, big circles. But we got four of them here in a row, and we're gonna get all of them done today, hopefully. Now on to the third field of the day. We just barely started this one, and then we ran out of wrap. So we went to the barn, filled up wrap again. Now we're headed back here to continue stripping cotton. But we do have on this field a lot of rocks for some reason. And it's not fun. You have to have your header way up in the sky. So it's, it's a little bit of a hassle. I don't know if you can see all the rocks there on the ground, but you definitely, definitely do not want to get them stuck in your header because that can cause a fire really quickly. And you got to be very, very careful and you got to watch out because one of, one of these machines burning down to the ground is a lot of money and that's not something we want right now. So yeah, you got to be careful. But on a not cotton side note we are we are about to be done with peanuts we're on our last 60 acres so hopefully that'll get done either today or tomorrow might not get done today because of how slow they're going over there but i'm hoping oh not even, you know i don't know what it's not even going to be tomorrow when we're going to get done with it because the forecast shows tomorrow is going to get very very cloudy 
and it might have a chance of rain, so I doubt we're gonna be either stripping cotton or harvesting peanuts tomorrow. So I guess we'll see what tomorrow will bring, but I doubt we'll be able to do stuff like that tomorrow. We we'll have, might have to catch up on air seeding and turning on pivots and all that good stuff. And on to the fourth field. Uh, and they're clean again. They were extremely dirty, but now they're clean. It's late and we're gonna go home. See you tomorrow or if we can at least strip tomorrow, but guess, uh, guess until the next time we start stripping cotton again. Well, it's too cloudy to strip more cotton, so back in the air seeder. Yeah, and I air seeded for like 45 minutes to an hour, and I'm done air seeding because I am out of wheat. And my, my brother was supposed to bring me some wheat, and he only left to our silos now to, to go get some wheat. So it's gonna be a while till he comes back. So I'm gonna drive back here to my truck. Uh, I'm gonna go drive to town, pick up myself some lunch, cause I'm kind of hungry. And then, except for, I forgot to take with lunch to the farm today, so I'm gonna go get myself some. And then I'll come back to the peanut basket since we are done harvesting peanuts, then I will start loading up trucks and start emptying out the peanut basket. And then uh, I might even put some peanuts in some bags. Well, we don't have any bags, so for now, I'll just put them in the shovel of the 4455. And then later, we'll put them in bags so we can take the peanuts home, roast them, and have some good roasted peanuts. So yeah. We will just lower this guy all the way. There we go. Lower that guy. I'm gonna grab the tractor, bring it up over here, and then we'll uh, we'll get some cleaner peanuts since I do want to the peanuts that I want to keep for roasting. I want to clean them a little bit so that we get all the good stuff. So I'll definitely want to put it over the shaker. Might need to just shovel around a little bit that way I don't have to keep moving around. So man, that filled up pretty quickly. All right, so I can put a few more peanuts in here and then uh, we're gonna eat these. These are really good looking peanuts. So these are gonna be really tasty. Yeah, I think that should be good enough. I'm gonna take these home, might take I don't know, a few of these out. These darker ones might have gotten a little bit of frost damage, but you know, they look they look good on the inside. So regardless, we're gonna take these home. There's still a few twigs and branches in there, but gonna roast these. It's gonna be some good snacks right there, that's for sure. Since the peanut harvest is officially done, I'm gonna go uh, unhook these since uh, we clearly don't need these anymore or for the rest of the year anyway, until next year. I'm actually gonna wait just a little bit before leaving here. I see a semi off in the distance right there. And if he turns off this way to look, come load up peanuts, then I'm gonna wait. Cause that way I can load him up first and then leave with this buggy. So it looks like he's slowing down. Yep, I'm gonna have to Wait with this just a little bit and then load up a semi truck first before leaving here because it would take me at least 20 minutes to get to the shed and back where we usually park these buggies. So it will take me about 20 minutes to get there and back and unload and everything so I'll have to do that later and uh, load up semi trucks first. Or 
Store. Does anyone want our dust? You can have it for free. No charge. That's one. And then there's the second one parked for the winter. There's the peanut equipment parked for the year. Two buggies are back there, and then we got the six row digger behind this one, then we got the eight row digger. We had to kind of take off our doors here because the eight row digger didn't want to fit in here. So we made do with it. All right, after a couple days of complete moisture and a bunch of clouds and a lot of dew in the mornings, we weren't able to strip any cotton or not any for the past couple of days. So we're out here now, I believe it's, I believe it's Friday. No, actually it's Thursday. But yeah, anyways, we're coming out here now. Hopefully we can strip some cotton today. I'm gonna walk out here to the field. The field actually looks pretty, pretty decent compared to some of the other fields that we were going at. So I'm gonna feel some of this cotton, see what it feels like. Let's see, well, there's no really any moisture on there anymore. Today morning I checked the cotton and there was a lot of moisture on the cotton itself. Seems like that has all gone. Everything's crunching pretty good. We might be able to go. I'd say we grab one or one of the strippers, come out here, maybe drive a couple of a couple of yards and then see what it see what it looks like. But as far as moisture on the cotton, there is none. And they're cracking good. Yeah, I'd say we could start stripping some cotton again. This is not the field we are going to be stripping. We just wanted to cover a few end rows. We had half peanuts, half cotton, so we wanted to quickly strip just one round right here because the pivot is supposed to move onto this side and start watering the wheat. But the air seeder right there is barely sewing on there. So we don't want to get the cotton all wet here. So we're just going to quickly strip just a couple passes down here and then we'll move to the actual field that we're going to harvest. Time to do the end rows. And let me tell you what, cotton's worst nightmare, tumbleweeds. They are the most annoying thing ever. They wanna get stuck, stuck on your header like that and you're just lifting up, backing up, oh, fell off. Oh, well, and you gotta keep going. And walking out takes too long, so you're just constantly playing with tumbleweeds. Now, I picked up that last one. See, it'll drop off now. Come on. There it is. All right. Tumbleweeds are very, very annoying. If you don't have them, you're lucky. Be thankful. Count your blessings. <laughs> Every now and then, you gotta let one tiny tumbleweed come through because those won't bother too much, but. Once you got really big ones, they can really cause an issue pretty quickly too. It's actually pretty decent cotton, not bad. I do have a screen in here finally, but I was gonna have my yield monitor set up on there, but I need the bubble first and I don't have the bubble. I just currently just have the screen. So I'm gonna have to do without the yield monitor for a little bit. Now that's a big one. Can get rid of this one. I don't want it. Get off of my field. While I'm out here, might as well grab a few more. These end rows are sure gonna take a while. I just barely came right here on these eight rows. Now I'm headed back. These are our mile long rows. And so the outside ones are like, what is it? I think 1.7 or 1.8 miles or something like that. So it's quite the long distance to do these end rows. But it's working good besides a few tumbleweeds that there are. Finally done with the end rows, now on to some better cotton, or some good cotton. 
not our greatest con, but this is actually some pretty decent con. I think in about like five days, then we'll, we'll move some of our best, move, move on to some of our best stuff. So that'll be exciting. Or let's hope five days. It might be a little longer than that, but that's what we're shooting for. And that's gonna be it for today. I just barely finished my bail, so that's why I'm backing up now. Uh, we don't really like to leave cotton in the cotton stripper or in the baler because there's potential to start a fire and we really don't want to do that. So we like to have our machines as empty as possible. So now that I got no cotton in my round baler or in my accumulator or anything, now I'm going to head to our gigantic air compressor and then clean this thing off and call it a night. If it works. She's clean, currently filling her up with diesel. Gonna grease her yet, and then she should be ready for tomorrow morning. But as for now, I do appreciate y'all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.